It's very hard for me to believe that it's 40 years that I've been working in this field of psychotherapy and counselling. It seems really not that long ago that I started. I was 20 when I started and I'm 60 today. And for those 40 years, I feel I have just begun to understand what it means to work with another person and to really, you know, make it work and really get something out of it every minute that you talk to a person, every session that you have. And it's quite pleasant to remember how it started in that psychiatric hospital the first time I um, spent three months, I think it was, no, it must have been six months, from April to the next um, autumn, I think, visiting that ward regularly. I was still a philosophy student, but I would go to my philosophy courses at the University of Montpellier in the south of France, and then I would go straight through to Fondorel, the psychiatric hospital, where my then um, boyfriend was working in um, this children's ward and I got so involved in it as I had been previously when he was working in the cancer ward and previous to that when he was working in A&E I had gotten into the habit of you know just joining him whatever he did and put a white coat on and I would be treated as if I was a medical student same as everybody else but of course since I wasn't I wouldn't be able to perform the medical actions, so I got into the habit of talking with people instead. And uh, to be at the person's head while the medicine was being carried out and the operations were being done on their wounds and all that, and that's how I learned the job, really. So that was 1971, 1972. Um, and... I found it quite difficult to work with people who had these physical illnesses and who were in pain. Pain, pain made me feel so compassionate for them that I would almost feel the pain myself. It was much, much easier for me once I started working in psychiatry because I kind of recognized the pain. I didn't have to you know, try to imagine what it was like to have psychological pain or emotional pain at all. This was what my life had been made of for so many years. And so I was extremely pleased to finally have found my home. I knew I would never make a doctor. I would never be any good at um, working with people in a physical way. But I knew that I was very good at understanding where people were coming from and to really home in on the things that were bothering them and to make sense of them in a way they could not do themselves. Already then, you know, it, I was a natural at it. And so I got on amazingly well with these autistic children. They took to me like a fish to water, really, and I took to them like a fish to water as well didn't seem to me that there was an illness there. It just seemed to me these were kids who couldn't talk. And um, they seemed otherwise pretty well normal to me. And I could uh, walk with them and take them to um, the play area and play games with them and have little chats with them and give them a cuddle. In those days that was all possible in France. In the south of France, in Montpellier, people weren't challenging this kind of thing. They weren't suspicious of me not being a medical student. They were only too pleased to have me there. And so I got very deeply involved with that. And then later on, when Jean-Pierre did another uh, placement in psychiatry a few months later at... Um, at uh, an uh, award for acute schizophrenia and um, 
especially for young women, I got also very involved and found it very interesting to talk with girls who had been, you know, who were maybe a year younger than me or maybe the same age as me or maybe a little bit older, but who had seemed to me very similar problems than problems I'd had myself with their families, with feeling suffocated, feeling that there was no room for them in the world, feeling there was no point in life. These kinds of existential issues that were only too familiar to me. And they were thin sometimes if they were anorexic. But then people thought I was very skinny in those days. But I never thought I was anorexic and I had never any trouble with depriving myself particularly of food or anything. And I thought people made too much of it all. They made things into illnesses far too quickly. It seemed to me from the start all these things were so very, very different to physical illness. Later on it was a relief when I discovered Thomas Zaza's work where he made that very same point that psychiatric illness is really not at all the same thing as physical illness and we shouldn't treat it like that. Because this happens to people who really find themselves in a difficult position in the world and who have difficulties in living or difficulties in finding out who they are and what they want to be and how they can best engage with life and how they can kind of get out of the impasse they've maneuvered themselves into or other people have maneuvered themselves into. So right from the word go, as I wasn't a medical student, I wasn't a psych psychiatrist in training and I still wasn't a psychologist in training either. I was a mere philosophy student who hadn't even fin finished my first degree in philosophy yet. From the very first it seemed to me these were philosophical issues and those people were trying to resolve existential questions and really really craved the possibility of talking about it. Not the autistic kids, of course, in the beginning, but in that second placement with these young women, it seemed to me that's all they really needed, to have a firm conversational partner who could help them face up to their troubles and have a new, completely new perspective on them, a new approach to them. Presumably because I was so young myself, quite a kind of friendly approach to them and a kind of debunking approach, just helping them see that what they were doing was maybe barking up the wrong tree, that if they had difficulties in living, attempting suicide was not the way out, but understanding what was wrong and then finding their own strength in order to get it corrected, get it better and get a grip on their life and stand up to any people who were trying to push them down the ladder and make them, you know, falter and fail and become a mental patient. It was worth doing that, standing up to them and finding their voice and speaking out. So I was kind of an advocate for them sometimes. I was not that I was representing them, but in that I would speak up for them, to them and they would find their own voice and be able to do it for themselves later on. And that was really how I started doing my conversations with people. I wouldn't have dreamt of calling it psychotherapy, but with hindsight I know that is what I was doing. And since I hadn't been trained in that method at all, I was just applying my philosophical thinking and being systematic and approachable and conversational and having a dialogue and I found most people really really appreciated that and they were much more reflective and thoughtful about things than any of the doctors gave them credit for so I became really fascinated with all that and I discovered that I was this hospital called Saint Alban the hospital of Saint Alban in the Lozère and the Massif Central 
where people had experimented with exactly these same kinds of ideas and where they had created a hospital environment where people were free to come and go, where they were engaged in all kinds of activities and where there was a real emphasis on talking and doing things with them therapeutically in order to liberate them and help them find their own way of being. So that is where Jean-Pierre and I went and visited and before we knew it in the autumn of 1973 that's where we went to work and the way it worked in Saint Alban is that you lived in the hospital in your own flat but you were basically on the job 24 7 there were very few psychiatrists there in fact when we joined there was only one psychiatrist later on there were Two, and this was for 1,200 patients. So the interns took up a very important position and someone like myself with a philosophy degree on a psychology post was pushed into taking far more um, authority and doing many more things than I'd been trained for or was perhaps ready for. But it worked. I threw myself into it, believed in myself felt I had a lot to offer. My past experience in drama and in um, other artistic activities helped enormously. And I worked with the patients very directly, learned skills like psychodrama and large group work, had supervision, learned psychotherapy, but also was able and allowed and encouraged to apply art and drama and um, all kinds of experimental things like working with music or working with discussions about books or working with small groups or doing some practical exercises, going for walks. Anyway, the hospital was set up in that way. We would take the patients into the mountains and go search for narcissi in the spring and for the for the um, perfume industry locally and we would go mushrooming with them and we would go all around doing all manner of things and there were lots of um, places where they could work as well work um, with wood work with book binding, all sorts of things, and all of these things were part of the way of being. There was an internal radio in the hospital that I um, was quite um, keen on and that I did some sort of programs on with my, um, my colleagues. And all of these activities, this very immersed way of being with these patients, who were often patients that had been sent there from the hospital Saint-Anne in Paris, uh, patients that had become unruly or patients that had um, killed people or that basically would have to stay in psychiatric care for the whole of their life. They were then sent down to saint Alban in the Massif Central and there we worked with them in this experimental way. They couldn't get away, that was always the joke in the hospital. You didn't need keys, you didn't need to lock them in, because for many months of the year the hospital was surrounded by snow and the rest of the time the roads towards any sort of civilization around saint Alban were long, long roads and nobody ever got away. Anyway, why should they get away? The hospital was a very special place, a proper sort of asylum, a special atmosphere where all the nurses lived near the hospital. They all did more than the hours that they should be doing. Nobody really checked up on anything. There was a medical director rather than an administrative director. Everybody was committed to this project of living with the patients and helping them have a good life. It wasn't really about curing them or helping them get out because if you were in central bung you probably weren't going to get out. But it was very much about helping them develop themselves, helping them 
engage with intellectual activity, helping them enjoying themselves, helping them relate to each other more effectively, helping them sort out conflict, helping them understand 